everyone. Uh, revisiting the Dynamo concept for education. Uh, it's a tricky topic, I would say, uh, regarding all the, the, the talk we had on, on, this, uh, on this specific topic. So I'm Hilaire Fernandez. I'm a teacher in the uh, Department of Education in uh, Geneva. I have also have a background on uh, computer science. On uh, I a long term, long time free software enthusiast, and a small talk enthusiast also since a couple of, of years. So uh, in this presentation, uh, I will discuss a few topics. First, why I'm doing this presentation. Um, what is a Dynabook for my perception? Uh, how we can change uh, the Dynabook perception we have by just changing the point of view. Then I will tell you how far I have been on this uh, project, on how people can get involved. Yeah, the boss. So why this presentation? Uh, first, I want to say that um, the Dynabook concept uh, in education does not really exist. Um, if, you, if you consider the use of uh, uh, numeric tools on uh, media, associated media, most of the time they are not used. Um, the teaching is still done with the traditional way of uh, books, paper, which is perfectly fine. But uh, we can't say that we are on the numeric age in education. Sometimes the teacher would go in the computer classroom, then they will decide to do some activity with the computers. But it's, this is not a daily usage. If you compare to other um, uh, to the other sector of the of the society, you will realize that in this sector you have daily use of the computer. They are using dedicated uh, numeric devices to do their task. So this is why I like to take the the metaphor of the cashier register. You know what is a cashier register? You know the machine when you just buy the things and you know, okay. So I think we need to think of the data book with this metaphor. So this is the cashier register we are using in education right now. And uh, in, we should not use this one, but more something like that. With the touch screen, so see, you can take a look, compare these two devices. This one has a touch screen, there is a screen of course, but more important, if you look at uh, very clearly here, or maybe here, on here, you have specific input devices. This is what make uh, this is what make uh, the tool uh, fit to the task. That make the operation faster, more reliable. And this is the things we don't have in education. This kind of things you can think of any sector in the economy. Try to think about this. Now we realize that in each of the sector that. They have that kind of devices. For example, if you take the train, I'm not sure in Argentina how is it, but um, in many countries, if you take a train, you will see the, um, the officer of the train, they will walk and they have a kind of device, a small computer device with this, the, the software dedicated to his task, unlikely with also with input device to scan your ticket or thing like that. And you can think any kind of sector you will realize that they have the tools specific for their task. Um, I think man, I think education is uh, the only sector where we do it the other way. We take the tools on the shelf. Okay, we say we are going to use these tools, even if it's not suited to the task. Why is it like that? Not maybe because uh, education, most of the time, is, uh, is, um, is seen as a liability. I mean, there is no short-term profit you can make. Or even if you optimize the way of teaching, you don't have uh, uh, you don't have benefits. You have yes, there is a social benefit, but you you don't have, I will say, a financial benefit. It will be maybe additional liability. Uh, why? So the second reason why I want to make this presentation is just to uh, to think about how people can get involved. And if we want to be serious about the dynamic concept for education, 
uh, there is many field of expertise that are um, need and useful. We'll talk about that later. So for me, what is a Dynabook? For me, the Dynabook is a vehicle in education, uh, just to uh, to give uh, access to dynamic uh, dynamic model uh, of knowledge that a user can design or uh, use. So, for example, a teacher designing some dynamic contents a kids can use, or another teacher use, or it can be a kid designing dynamic dynamic model another kids can use, or a teacher, or whatever. So if you take this example, uh, this is the simulation of a Newton telescope. So this uh, this picture is a, is static. So how is it if we can make it uh, more dynamic? Maybe I just, just first explain what is it. So the Newton telescope, if you don't know, uh, okay, you can imagine, okay, the telescope is like that. Then on the back, you have a parabolic mirror, okay? You have a secondary mirror, then you have here, the, the eyes will be there, there is another lens there. So the light beam, they are going there, then they are concentrated on the secondary mirror, and they go there. This is the principle of the Newton telescope. So what is interesting is to have a dynamic model of these things. So we have we have the same picture here. And now what we can do with the dynamic model, we can uh, just try to understand what's work, how it's working. Okay. Indeed, all the light beam, they are concentrated in this area. So we can understand that we have more light in this small surface than we have here. Okay. So this is the first things you. This is the first thing we can think about um, a dynamic model. But we can do more. For example, what about if we change the curve here, the par the parabolic curve of the primary mirror? How we can affect the e efficiency of the telescope? So we can decide, to, okay, to blend the curve just by adjusting the focus point of the parabola then we can see, okay, this mirror, this kind of mirror is maybe not that good because it's only collect the light coming from there. So, okay, and let's... So the idea of a dynamic model is there. So you can imagine a Dynabook uh, where you, you have that kind of content that can be designed. So this, this one was designed uh, uh, with Dr. Geo, so this, this is one type of model you can design, but you can uh, design other models like that, which is related to uh, Euclidean geometry, I would say, with also um, numerical uh, capabilities. So Dynabook, think about the Dynabook as a vehicle to be able to, to suggest that kind of contents uh, for the learner, for the teacher and for the learner, and with the ability to design this kind of content. So now if we take different point of view um, from the, for the, the dynamic, if we take the point of view of a teacher, okay, there's no question, okay, they are just uh, teaching uh, stuff. So the first point, okay, uh, manipulating, designing uh, knowledge, there's no question on that. Uh, but the teacher, they are not only doing that, they are also managing the students. They are also, in fact, I'm a teacher, I know well about that. They, they do a lot of management. Uh, this is just a small example. Some of this management, they are not done during the class, okay? But some of this management, for example, uh, for the assignment, when you finish your lesson, okay, you, you will give some homework to the students for the next time. So maybe the Dynabook can make this task easier to manage for the user. This, this has nothing to do with knowledge and all this uh, super stuff. No, this is just the boring stuff. But uh, if we want to make the device more uh, more uh, fit to the user, think of the cache register. Uh, this is thing that it should be worth considering. Uh, the next one is, for me is the best one. Uh, every year. At back school, uh, at the back to school day, I always see the same things. Uh, uh, maybe I live in a rich country. I work in a rich country. Okay. We give a lot of stuff to the students. I mean, 
just just really saying like that really <laughs> they have to come two times to get the things at home okay binder test book notebook or whatever uh this terms and um, of course they don't take this every day at school but it's quite a lot uh so i think we can do better than that just imagine in the shop the catcher register so the operator not with the machine but with a big book and writing down everything that you are you are you are buying no you can you don't imagine that of course um taking the point so it's not a person this is software but taking the point of view um of the software uh for a dynamic what we want okay i think we want free software uh not only from the application level but also from the operating system level why because it is easier to adapt to the hardware we are free to change and free to redistribute it so there is no question on doing uh on doing another way uh, we want something like like for the model i show we want to be able to do rapid prototyping we want uh, an arrangement where we it's easier to manipulate uh, the things we are building so yeah this is no we know what is it this is small talk right on on top of that we want dsl i mean what is dsl uh why dsl in the education why we want to do that because the idea is to be to have a set of uh, of model uh, dr joe is one set of model to the euclidean geometry but imagine that for other field in the education on each with this kind of model we can decide to build library of scripts uh that will make a newton telescope for example or any the other kind of stuff that the teacher they can directly use or modify if they want so they will use the the model through the script so this is why dsl is uh, important and we want this also to be uh, in local language we want the dsl to be written in local language so it's easy up to the kids if they want to participate on that and even for the teacher uh many teacher may not be comfortable uh in english and the next reason of course is to be portable to different hardware architecture because right now there is no such things as a dynamic uh hardware my personal ba of course that skew small talk is is better to this task okay this is my point of view uh for the free hardware i'm not a hardware specialist i don't know at all about that um but my my thinking uh for the hardware it can be designed in uh several places but more importantly i think it should be in manufacture uh anywhere and better locally where it is used otherwise it look like uh, yeah it's, uh, for me it doesn't fit right because uh for for such a project with large scale adoption i uh, you want this thing to be local right. there is a economic point of view uh what is mean uh to use a dynamic book in schools uh what is the implication in the local economy there is many point to consider so okay uh, I tell all these things uh this uh, for me this sound a bit like crazy uh so is there, is there a plan to do that okay um I'm just working alone on this thing so this is something that interests me as an educator as a free as a free software developer as a, as a small talker so I start step by step I wrote down a small plan uh, nothing to be follow of course but this is what what i would do uh the first thing i would do i will develop uh, uh the dynamic application on this dynamic application i will be able to use it in my school so this will be only me not the kids uh, of course because i don't have such things as a dynamic device but i will be a, able to use on my desk computer we have tablet uh screen tablet so we can do and writing as well so i can test it me then other teacher in the school and then i will want at this next step try to think about the try to think about the hardware or maybe using um uh, existing uh free software uh free hardware i mean free architecture 
like the Ritz 5 uh, CPU to try to think about a uh, design like this. Maybe doing a Dynabook, uh, like Alan K used to say, an interim Dynabook, maybe something that be put in a suitcase, in a small suitcase, you know, the business suitcase. So no, nothing really integrated, but something that can be manipulated and tested to see how it works. So this is, I asked my son to produce for me some visual concepts. Um, this is my thinking on my experience of teaching. Um, you see, there is no keyboard. Uh, for me, the hand and the pen is the, one of the best uh, invention in the, uh, in the human history. And there is no reason uh, we should remove that kind of things. The kids should be able to use the pen because it's a fantastic tool to just do whatever you want to draft ID and the other. Uh, why there is two screen? Okay, this is my observation on how the kids are working. Maybe it's not right. Uh, this can be a question, but most of the time in the traditional way of paper book, uh, the kid they works always with two documents. They have a notebook, they have a book, or they have a paper from the teacher, or they have a notebook, or most of the time they have two. So my first idea was to have that kind of things. Maybe you can think, okay, just one big screen and split in two screen, you have kind of two documents, maybe that would, that's the trick. Uh, we don't see the size, okay. This size is A4, A4 size. Is it common in Argentina, A4 size? Yeah, it should be large enough, I mean, because Otherwise, this is too small, not practical. So regarding the, the management concept, uh, uh, so I draft, I draft the idea about what we need to do to, to design in this management aspect. The dynamic should know about the teacher, should know about the school, should know about the time slot, should know about the, the classes, should know about at which time is each courses, so he can help and assist the, um, the teacher, for example, when he's giving new assignments. Uh, so I develop a few of a few widgets uh, to map this uh, representation to widget. Here, this is a breadcrumb to navigate in the various uh, data. Then we have access to all the data. So this is just a viewer. So we are here, we are in the mathematics uh, information. This is the period of this teaching. There is no known teacher, the topics. And then, uh, okay, we have the edit, uh, the edit operation on the same thing. So we can see that in this classroom, okay, we can edit the things. So this is the decorated toolbar. Tool, uh, tool so when you have collection of objects, you can uh, add new items, you can edit items, you can remove items. And here, on top of that, you can import or export to file. So, for example, if, there, if you have a list, a list of students, the teacher will import directly from C, CSV file, for example. So, regarding regarding knowledge management, is that I know I have not started working on that, but my my ID. So you recognize the the icon I just show you. Uh, there, that's the same thing, right here. So the, the idea is to have, um, yeah, yeah. Um, the main tool, the main input device will be the pen, okay? So maybe you can recognize Dr. Geo way of managing documents. So the, the first tool is the pen, okay? But if the dialogue is just about writing, we can use a paper, uh, there is no sense, okay? So, but in this, so you can think about uh, a sheet of paper where you write things, then you will be able to import uh, a dynamic model that will make the, the paper uh, dynamic. So of course it will be, then you will be there, you will directly manipulate. So think about the Newton telescope simulation just before. So you just integrate it there and here, the student write his stuff, whatever. Then you will have that kind of uh, view inserted in the in the paper documents and of course you should be also able to write over this important dynamic document so to make some special id of these things on point thing like that so that's the main idea for the 
to represent uh, the dynamic major in the Diana book. So I start to work, uh, start working on the on the writing with the vector graphics of a quiz. So this okay, that's classic stuff. Uh, I have been exploring the idea also to have a variable width of the of the writing, but with the device without the the sensibility of this. Maybe this can make the hardware uh, cheaper to to have. So, how to get involved? That's the main reason I'm doing this presentation. I mean, I would like to invite people to right, to join join me if they're interested to work on that, to think on that, to have ID, to bring ID, to do stuff. So there is, as I say earlier, there is different way to be involved. I mean, th th there is technical way, but there is also educational way. Uh, if you're a professor in university, you can you can uh, we can think about a student project as well. This is something that is still new, but I think this, uh, this will be more elaborated in the in the future. Uh, even in economy, I think there is think there's things to do uh, on that on hardware. I know nothing about hardware, so yeah, I can't do anything on that. I hope some other people can do that. And for a such long-term project, I think also benefactors, uh, how to get benefactor. No, it's a full-time job to to get to to do uh, prospecting on benefactor. Yeah, it's is uh, it's not something I would do. Uh, I I don't know how to do that anyway. I will be likely not good at this. Um, this requires also experience and expertise. So if you want to look at uh, uh, what I show, including this presentation on the code, all the things, you can just clone this repository. There is also uh, some more documentation as well. I try to document this so it's easy. It's easier to share the, the ID. Well, I'm done. What other devices, input devices, uh, you think we could have besides the pen mm -hmm. in education? Just need to look at the field in the education. Uh, for example, you have experimental sciences. So you want devices you can plug in the in the Dana book to to get input, make measure or thing like that. Yeah, sure. Okay. And um, for other things like I don't know, uh, well, math, or, uh, what? Okay, cool. Yeah, well, I like the idea. Yeah. And frankly, this is not. Uh, I have no solid idea on that. Yeah. So I think this is something that is open to reflection. A question about the the shape of the device. You said that you design it like an A4 sheet. Um, have you thought about, or what do you think about um, using the cell phones that maybe the students will already have? I, maybe not for primary school, but eventually it's uh, most likely that the, the students there will have a cell phone. And at, I understand that maybe it's not the best shape for the tools that you want to create, but maybe it could be like part of the iteration to start with something that they already have and you don't have to worry that much about the hardware. And you know that it has a touch screen and, and they will understand maybe the, the design of it. So have you thought about working with cell phones first? Regarding the phone uh, and the use of the phone, this is something that we already uh, do in my school. We are using um, a mathematic platform for exercising. Um, they, they can use the phone to make the exercise in the bus and uh, the thing like that. But, uh, but if we want to replace the notebook, the well, yeah, you, where they write, right, the phone, from my point of view, is too too small. And I don't think, and I think the kids still need to be able to to write. Okay, this is maybe this is a yeah, maybe I have on that topic. But I think the kids need still need to to be able to use a pen. And with the the phone, uh, uh, sadly, the screen is too small. Uh, seemed to me. No, what do you think? No, I I, I understand that it would be better with something bigger. Uh, maybe they they could 
the bring, I don't know, tablets, which are a little bigger. But just since you, you said yourself, it's a long way until you get where you want to go. And, and you need to know not just about software, but about hardware. And I was thinking maybe that would be like a um, stepping stone in, in, in the path to, to getting the Dynamook. Maybe tablet would be better. Yeah, yeah, but, but you, you, but that's the same problem. You need to have students with cell phones. Mm. It might be easier to to have that in class that the students with tablet. I know, at least here. Uh, for me, the phone, the the kids can they can use it uh, when they, they they just need to have a quite simple input to provide uh, to to give, but not complex one like the one I describe in my drawing. The maybe. The, the size of the screen would be too small. So for exercising, for example, tr for training, it's a very good uh, device. It's a good device. But it will not um, fill the gap. I mean, uh, if you want to, the, the kids who have a, light, a lighter uh, backpack, uh, it will not do the job, for example. They will see need to have the the book and the the notebook, the pen, or the thing like that, and the backpack. And for me, I, I would I would like to replace all these things just by one device. Hi. Um. So I like the presentation a lot, and I was thinking about uh like this notion of trying to use software to improve our lives and the, like the way we work and um. I don't know how students experience the world. And um, I don't know, I, I wanted to ask you what led you to this path of trying to do something uh, with software to uh, improve, I, I don't know, improve the world is like a lot, but uh, this improve the, the, the context in which you are working because uh, like as an educator, you already have a lot of work and so on. And it's not common, even for people who know how to program and, and build software, it's not uh, so common to think about uh, like going uh, one step, uh, I don't know, more than, than your, your, what you're working on and so on. So uh, I don't know what motivated you to, to start on this path. I think the, this one is uh, one point, uh, the, this, uh, this sentence of Gordon Moore. Uh, the other thing is when I, I told you I saw kids like that and with the, the big backpack say we can do better I mean uh, yeah I think we can do better um, and sometimes the parents so once a year they complain about that always every year there's parents complaining because it's too it's too heavy and uh, yeah so yeah, the interesting to try something new. That's okay. One of the reasons to even maybe, I think the the chance of success of this project is close to zero percent. I mean, we all know that. Okay, but okay, just try, and maybe you will end with will will end up with something different. Maybe very likely, uh, in fact. But okay, that's what makes the life interesting. I mean, uh, if you just stay in your boring zone. Yeah, the, what will be your life? Yeah, it's just boring life. <laughs> so I can come here uh, thinking like that. Huh? Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, that's what Thank makes you. life uh, fun uh, as well. See? On the other uh, point is with the kids also. Yeah. I enjoy uh, a lot uh, to be with the kids in school. Uh, 